thank you for your presentation this morning. I am now going to bring up the uh, wonderful team that created the PA Fights Dirty campaign. Um, first, we're going to hear from Carrie Lepore, who is the Deputy Secretary of Marketing, Tourism, and Film at the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development and Matthew Blitt, who is president of Red House Communications, the creative energy behind PA's first litter prevention campaign, PA Fights Dirty. Please join me on stage. Oh. And Peter, I cannot forget, <laughs> I could not forget Peter Bard, who is the media, yes. media, director at Red House. So please have a seat. Hey. <coughs> We're waiting for the PowerPoint. But you know what, I can actually, uh, I'll jump in really quickly, but didn't have to jump in that quickly because it's already <laughs> up. Um, and I'll sit down, but I always have a lot of nervous energy and I do better standing. Um, so if you don't mind, as soon as I'm done my part, I'll join you uh, gentlemen at the table. But um, good morning, uh, as Phoebe just said, my good friend Phoebe just said, I'm Carrie fisher Lapore, Deputy Secretary of Marketing, Tourism, and Film at the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. I normally have to take a breath after I introduce myself <laughs> because it's such a long name and title and department and everything else. Um, so uh, we are so incredibly excited to be here today and presenting this work that we are all so, so proud of. Um, but quickly, I, I just want to give a little context to say like how we got here and why um, the Marketing, Tourism, and Film Office is uh, up here presenting creative work for an anti-litter campaign versus our very good uh, partners with DEP and DCNR and PennDOT who have been with us shoulder to shoulder every step of the way. But if you would indulge me for a quick minute to talk about me and my work <laughs> and the work of our office, um, the mission of our deputate marketing, tourism and film is to inspire the investment of time, labor and financial resources in the state by building Pennsylvania's image as a destination to visit a place to grow a business and a community to call home and a state to feel proud of thanks to a strong quality of work and life. The work of the office is tied to Pennsylvania's authentic connection to happiness. We're not talking sunshine and puppy dogs. We're talking about William Penn's vision for the holy experiment. Pennsylvania founded as a place of tolerance and freedom, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which was penned right in Philadelphia. So we feel a real authentic connection to the idea of happiness as a feeling of well-being, fulfillment, and prosperity at the heart of Pennsylvania's culture and history. It is who we are, it is in our soil, it is woven into our DNA. So when we talk about trash and litter, it's bad for our ego. It, it's hard to be proud of a state to call home when you walk out your front door and, and there is litter in your streets or you take your children to the park and it is um, crowded with uh, cigarette butts and, and everything else like that. So it's hard to feel a real community pride when you see litter and trash in your community. And pickups are so fantastic. I've done a few pickups in Harrisburg um, where I live and it is great community. You're with like-minded people, you're out there, you're affecting change and everything like that. But we knew that this campaign needed to kind of be a step before all of that. And we are always pushing community, everything we do, but we really wanted to help affect and impact behavior, change behavior, and, and to get people um, to think about the prevention part and, and create the real change. So that was just like a little setup uh, for this. Um, again, I just wanna quickly before I get started, uh, cause I get excited and I'll start talking and a little off track um, that, uh, our partners with Red House are fantastic. They are the official agency of the Pennsylvania Tourism Office. They have been partners with us for eight years. We were so incredibly honored and thrilled to work on this statewide campaign that we are hoping will have the longevity and life 
um, that will uh, outlive um, us uh, in these positions and something that my children in you know, 30, 40 years from now are going to be able to point to and say, you know, my mom helped do that. Um, so that's really uh, you know, a, a testament to our partnership with Red House and the creative folks there. Shannon, who first approached me about this in 2018, girlfriend, it is now 2022, but I'm wearing the t-shirt and it really, really happened, so thank you. Phoebe, we have worked with Phoebe and uh, the, the brilliant, brilliant work um, that I have learned so much from, from Phoebe. Um, Sarah DeSantis, from my office uh, was the one who really spearheaded this campaign. So thank you, Sarah. And then our really good friends again at PennDOT and DCNR and uh, DEP and everyone else who helped informed all of this. I'm the lucky one who gets to stand up here and take credit for it, but it really was a village. And I just have to, because I am tourism, give a shout out to Poconos, Brian and Chris to say thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so the uh, situation um, this is just setting up what we all know and has been discussed at nauseum at this point. So I'm not going to read everything on here, but we know that there's approximately 502.5 million pieces of litter in Pennsylvania, as we just heard, the majority of which is four inches or smaller. That litter is being improperly managed, um, both intentional, unintentional, and it negatively impacts our quality of life. Everything that I just talked about, it's our natural environment. It is economic development. No business wants to move uh, into an area that is um, strewn with trash all around. So there are real economic impact implications of litter prevention in Pennsylvania. Um, we also know that age and maturity impact littering behavior with those under 19 as the most frequent culprits, while adults 21 to 35 are three times more likely to litter than those over 50. Motorists and pedestrians are the primary sources of roadside litter, with local roads accumulating the highest percentage of the litter. Again, this is everything that you guys um, know, you live it, you, you breathe it, everything else like that, but we're sharing this just to show that our work was rooted in the research um, and everything that uh, the litter, uh, the, um, litter impact uh, study really helped inform, as well as a bunch of other research that we did. The majority of litterers are not litter bugs, um, but regular people who litter situationally. These situational litterers often have reasons and rationale for the decisions they made around waste management. I would still wag a finger at all of them, um, but uh, as a result, we believe that education around the impact of littering and how an individual can make better choices when given the opportunity um, is the best way for us to really impact and change that behavior. It is not about shaming them, even though I just said I wanna you know, get all mama bear on them and, and shame them and yell at them. That's not going to impact change. That is not going to change behavior or anything like that. So the solution, a unique and ownable litter awareness and education campaign for Pennsylvania with emotionally resonant messaging to situational litterers 35, under 35 which will offer the greatest opportunity for notable and uh, prompt change and renewed pride in our uh, quality of surroundings. So with all of that said, I will sit down and oh, pass it over to Do you mind if I stand up? Please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So before we get into the, the work itself, I want to talk a little bit about how we arrive at an idea like this. A collaborative team of people yeah. come together, other folks in the room played a huge role. Uh, but in effect, developing a strategic campaign is an act of branding. And in essence, branding is the single idea that you hold in the mind of your consumer. So if I say Hershey, Hershey bar, you have a thought in your mind. But if I say Godiva, there's a totally different image that pops into your mind. And so when we develop a campaign, that's at the heart of what we're doing. We're building from a core proposition outward in order to directly affect the consumer's behavior. So that idea for this campaign was Think Small. This is the strategic platform from which all of the creative emanates out, including the PA Fight Story work. So solving a litter problem can feel overwhelming. We've all seen pictures of the piles of garbage along our roadsides, but most of Pennsylvania's litter is made up of small objects, <coughs> cigarette butts, cellophane wrappers, bottle tops, discarded one at a time, one person at a time. Together, they create a big problem. 
but it's a problem we can bring down to size as each Pennsylvanian makes the simple decision to properly dispose of their trash. People don't need to worry about solving the litter problem alone. They only need to mind these small actions. So this isn't necessarily the consumer facing language, but it is the platform from which, or the strategy from which, all of the work for PA Fights Dirty sprung. We arrived at PA Fights Dirty, every litter bit matters. So we're proceeding down the road from research, as Jenny said, the best research leads to the best solutions. The research are we have 500 million pieces of litter, most of them are four inches or less. There's situational littering going on. So we're going to build a campaign around this idea that, that the majority of our litter is made up of, of small litter. I'm gonna show this spot, if Rob is in the room, do I press, the, let's see, let's try these buttons. sound. PA road waste is four inches or less. Don't let an inch of litter turn into a mile. PA fights dirty. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. So that was the first spot. It's a, it's a, uh, a graphic of small pieces of litter that come together to form a Pennsylvania route sign. Litter draws litter. So take care of your trash before the tracks move. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Cigarette butts make up one third of all litter. Take up to 10 years to decompose and are toxic. Stash them till you can trash them. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. So Red House and production teams went out onto road, the state roadways and collected all of the litter that was used in the making of these commercials. I mean, it, yeah. our office stunk. Truly. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I mean, made with real PA litter. And we, we then went and, and met with our production partners and built all of these images hand by hand using real litter and animated them using stop motion to develop these spots. So truly a, a fully formed conceptual idea uh, that brings this to life. So this is a, a still image from behind the scenes in production which then turns into this ad, which you can see right now all over the Commonwealth. <clears throat> bit by bit, butt by butt. Coffee was terrific here from the team. Again, more kind of behind the scenes mm. about how this work was made using real Pennsylvania litter. And the piece that I think really hangs it together, and I hope some of you, if you're in Philadelphia over yeah. the next several weeks, get to see these as you're walking through Center City. But, but again, when, as we were collecting this litter, we had an idea about how we might turn litter into an installation that has real impact when you're, when you're walking down the road or, or waiting for some public transportation. So we assembled um, what is in effect a bus shelter advertisement using real litter um, and it was, it was carefully crafted by a team of creative individuals and then with our partners at Inter Intersection, Intersection yes, yes. in Philly, Philly yeah. we met uh, about a month ago and installed this bus shelter on 16th and Chestnut. That's right, and also 39th and Walnut. For so those that of being you university who soon. are going to be there soon. <laughs> and again, every litter bit matters. No one wants to be surrounded by trash, put all your garbage in a can where it belongs. And then the, the sort of payoff line at the bottom, this ad was made with PA litter. It really serves to bring that concept of thinking small home to the consumer. And again, with cigarette butts. <laughs> it's a lot of cigarette butts. It's a lot of cigarette butts, yeah. Do you know how many cigarette butts are there? Matt, do we know? Thousands, right? Thousands I mean, and thousands yeah. and thousands, yeah. And thousands. yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that would be like the jelly beans in the jar. That would be. <laughs> That's very. That would be a fun one. <laughs> I just feel badly for the Red House interns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, taking that one to them was, yeah. was That's interesting. So great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Good. Yeah. And of course, if you've been on any of Pennsylvania's highways recently, you've probably seen these outdoor boards. But no, stash it until you can trash it. It is all over. Pete, do you want to talk a little bit about the media mix? Sure, sure. We really did want to, f to have a dominant presence in Philadelphia, just, well, for a number of reasons. I mean, 
And it, it was really fun to, to, to have, uh, you know, bus wraps out of home, these experiential installations, video running across uh, both uh, cable TV and, uh, you know, online programmatic channels. So think Hulu, YouTube, any number of other streaming platforms. And what we really wanted to do was have a dominant presence. But I think when you see these installations on the street, that's when I think it really uh, resonates. And the idea, of course, here is behavioral change. And we wanted to have the kind of campaign that could begin that behavioral change process. And if you think back to, the, again, going back to connecting this to the research and the litter action plan, it talks about where the majority of this small litter is found. It's along our roadways. And so using a media strategy that focuses, focuses in on uh, tr heavy transit areas, commuter areas, and roadways makes uh, too much sense, a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. But it did run statewide. So yes. while there were some yes. fun executions in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, wrapping oh, yeah. buses, these other things, it was 100% a, a 67 county strategy that ran every corner of the state. Every corner. Yep. These are social ads. And we're still in progress. So we have several weeks left in the campaign, but we did want to take a small look into the campaign results to date. They're performing extremely well. And we have some individual insights that we're going to use down the line to feed further creative optimization and media optimization when given the chance. So Pete, I don't know if you can see this. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm it. happy to talk through it. Uh, so we've delivered nearly 32 million uh, you know, digital impressions to date. When we roll up the traditional impressions, it's going to be a much higher figure. So I think we'll probably push close to, I'll say, 70, maybe 75 million total impressions, again, statewide through the course of this campaign once it's all wrapped up in a few weeks. We've driven uh, nearly 118,000 uh, clicks to uh, the, the PA Fights Dirty uh, landing page. And I think this is really, to me, uh, one of the most important measures over 17.4 uh, million completed video views. We know that video is the best tool to engage with a younger audience and to have over 17 million people uh, interact with the ad in some form. Uh, we're really pleased with uh, that. And uh, when you look at the campaign click-through rate, I'll just break that down in terms of what that means briefly. It's 0.78%. So yes, that is less than 1%. But when you're looking at digital uh, you know, display campaigns that are run, we typically see for campaigns with a similar media mix a 0.4% click-through rate. So this is nearly double uh, the engagement from uh, young audiences clicking the ad, going to the site, and wanting to find out more information. So we're very pleased with that number. And in terms of video view rates, we're certainly looking at, okay, when people have an option to skip out of the video, are they doing so? And the reality is that's really not happening. At a 93% completion rate, people are choosing to engage with the message when they have an option not to. I think that's really a testament to the number of videos that we have and that we ran shorter video lengths in order to uh, align the consumption habits of a younger audience. And if I could just jump in one more thing. So the campaign click-through rates, of course, we're very pleased with this. But that's our, our call to action is don't litter. Don't it, litter. It's not click here to learn more or anything like that. So the fact that we are seeing this strong click-through rate when that is not the purpose of the ads, the ads are basically, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to curse right now for anyone who's going to be offended, I apologize, but it's like, don't be an asshole. <laughs> don't don't litter. <laughs> I mean, that that's basically I, I the purpose of, of the ads. So yeah. the fact that we so have good. this strong click-through rate right. is really a testament to how truly engaging right. the creative is, that people do want to learn more. Right, that's right. Yeah. That's a great point, Carrie. And I think we can even get we can get more granular than that yeah. to, to take a look at exactly who is responding and to what message. And this is where you know my heart starts to race as a marketer and an advertiser. <laughs> this is the data that then begins to inform how we get a sharper and sharper message to drive deeper and deeper engagement. So we can look creative unit by creative unit and say, for example, early in the campaign, early returns, 30, 30 or 60 days, 90 days in, um, this approach which we call toxic. Uh, it's the highest performing unit, unit and particularly in Google platforms and social media. It's also the top click driver of the top click driving channel. So when we need to drive clicks, right, if we, were, if we did have a place we absolutely had to send somebody, this would be the creative unit that we would hold forward and use to drive 
drive those clicks later. Yeah, lights out performance on lights Instagram. Out performance, right. Yeah. However, there are other units that have have different response rates among different demographics and audiences. So road sign, for the, the name that we use for this unit, is the top performing unit among women in our campaign. So where we're able to measure gender balance in the click-through rates of particular units, this is the top unit both across digital display and among women. And then when viewers are given the opportunity to choose which ad they view, which is something that is becoming more commonplace in digital platforms, choose which creative option you want to watch before yeah. you proceed on to your digital content. You may have seen that on Hulu. Hulu. That, that's where we specifically this is ran the, this. This is the creative execution that people choose. And lastly, uh, Magnet, while above the line performance in terms of the engagement we would look for, we wouldn't pull this one out of the mix for poor performance, it is the least popular of the three executions. And so I think there's a little teasing out to do about yeah. why that might be the case or what are the, what are the reasons, emotional reasons, why one particular creative is performing other, better than others. This unit in particular dominates Snapchat engagement and it's really popular among young male audiences. Why is that? We're not quite sure yet, yeah. but again, early returns on. Um, <laughs> That's the thing with the new campaign, you put it out there you right. see what happens, and then we will, as Matt said, refine uh, these insights and use it on fu towards future campaigns. Right. And last but not least, we'd be remiss uh, if we mm -hmm. didn't ask. There is a toolkit available mm -hmm. yeah. at this URL, and you can download the toolkit and sign up for the newsletter. All of the assets and a lot of the assets and branding is, is available there. It is not in Spanish. It is in the process of being translated to Spanish. We're also working with our partners at the state. Um, we will probably have the toolkit and all assets available in multiple languages. We are um, just finally got it posted and launched last week. Uh, it is with the translation company right now. So hopefully by Friday, we will have uh, Spanish assets uh, uploaded to this website, and then we're going to continue um, working with our partners uh, at the um, Asian American Pacific Islander Commission to determine the next set of um, languages to translate into. I just want to thank everybody for giving Red House the opportunity to work on this, this project. It's amazing. So really, thank you really so much fun. for all of your participation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Are there any questions? Yes. There has definitely been thought of that. It's a great idea. It's something that we've been um, proactively talking to Shannon and team and our friends at uh, PennDOT and DEP. Um, so that's like phase two. Uh, we, we got this launched. Um, we got the toolkit up. We are translating all the assets. We want to push that out to municipalities um, and others. Um, and DCED, we are community and uh, economic development, so we have really fantastic partnerships uh, with local governments. So we're going to be um, working with them to get these assets out. Next on the list is um, business partnerships. So uh, we have like a, a pretty good feel of who we are going to approach, um, what the ask is going to be, but we, we need uh, more than, that's what we're figuring out right now. Like, do they just use it? willy-nilly are we going in you know we're going to put together some decks um, with very specific asks uh, you know if um, for example um, one of the uh, uh, large supermarket chains we had talked about um, you know runs ads on uh, Route 83 or, or on a highway, and uh, could we get in one of their rotations for a digital billboard? Um, will McDonald's put us on their tray liners if they still do tray liners? Um, you know, what is the ask to, uh, I don't know if Alex is here from the beverage uh, or food merchants or, um, you know, uh, the, the bottlers, uh, you know, different groups and things like that. So that is 100% on the list up next 
look forward to uh, giving you an update in Trash Talk, which is our newsletter. <laughs> so definitely be sure to subscribe uh, to be updated um, as we announce all these new partnerships. And if anyone has ideas, um, please feel free to find us, share with the Keep PA Beautiful team or our state agency partners, let us know. Um, we strongly believe in best practices. Talk about happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're about to go nuts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, go explode. Um, yeah. Has there been any engagement around with the um, stadium? Because I know, like, Phillies and Eagles, they all have a lot of green aspects. Yeah. Right. I was wondering if you run any ads around that time or if there's any engagement down in that area, especially the amount of foot and, and visual traffic that's happening right now. Absolutely. And we are yeah. so thrilled that we have the buses wrapped yeah. that are yes. going, yeah. you know, up and yeah. down Broad Street yep. and yep. everything else like that. We are in SEPTA. We are we are yeah, we're transit on roads leading into the uh, the stadiums for sure. Yes, I ninety five, seventy six. Yes, we we are there. But on the list of corporate partners, we also want to look to see what we can do with our sports teams. I was at the Penn State game, which is not as exciting as <laughs> last night, but I was at the <laughs> Penn State game on Saturday, uh, and yeah. just really <laughs> think that there's tremendous opportunity. Um, for us to, whether it's like, you know, running something in stadium, is it outside the stadium, but um, right. yeah, a lot of opportunity. And I would think that we will have placements on a potential parade route. I mean, there are really, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. Everybody anything, knock, because, uh, everyone yeah. knock on wood, yeah. yes. Yeah. Don't mush us, no ah. kidding. <laughs> There's a question over here in the corner. Yes. Oh, sorry. Hello. Um, I, I, just, uh, I, I just did a uh, clean up at one of our parks and rides in the I work in, and um, two thirds of the stuff that um, I picked up um, were beverage containers. Mm -hmm. um, how could we have a campaign in Pennsylvania that doesn't even? I, I believe there was one can in mm -hmm. one of those images. How, how can we possibly ignore the single biggest um, uh, item as far as uh, square inches of, of uh, the total litter? Yeah. So um, beverage. I'm going to take this. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, John, for pointing that out. Beverage containers are a significant problem in Pennsylvania. Um, this campaign did focus on four inches or less. Yeah. And that is, and that's because predominantly that's what the litter is, and because this campaign is research based. That's why you don't see a lot. I think the biggest item you'll see is that red solo cup, which is probably why it resonated with that specific demographic. Could be, that's yes. Shannon. That's wow. good. That's yeah. good. Can we use yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, we might. And if I could just really quickly piggyback on what you just said, and I'm going to stand up because I can't see you sitting the thing. Um, to Shannon's point, this campaign, so our brand platform is PA Fights Dirty with this wonderful trash can, Keystone Trash Can. This is the brand platform. This is where um, the, the uh, anti-litter work will live. Um, every litter bit matters, counts. I can't believe I forget my own. Every little bit matters. Every little bit matters. Um, this is this specific campaign. We are launching based on a data-driven approach to this inaugural campaign. But the difference between a brand platform and a campaign is that an, a, a campaign has a start and an end. Um, that means that in the future, we could run another campaign grounded in the PA Fights Dirty brand platform that could speak to um, beverages, you know, containers, things like that. So we launched with addressing the four inch or smaller, but hopefully in the future, as I said, you know, we believe in this brand platform that it's going to be around for many, many, many years. Um, so, you know, that is a, a fantastic feedback, something for us to again, go back to the research to say, what does V2 look like of PA Fights Dirty? 
And that could focus on the beverage containers. Yes. Right? Exactly. Sure. Could. So, exactly. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yes. Because it's definitely something that needs to, needs to be addressed. And also, just because every uh, litter bit matters is focusing on the four inches or less, we, again, now have a brand platform to speak to the idea of don't litter, change behavior. So while the creative focuses in on this specific um, area of litter that, that we know, uh, that doesn't mean that we still can't use this to you know, grow the messaging to be broader. The creative is focused on this one thing, but the brand platform now exists and can flex into many different, different types of litter. Exactly. Oh, good. I, I was wondering how long that, if it was just a campaign, but yeah. you know, how long you were wanting to do this, how right. long you know, yeah. did this. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then with that, and, that, and I, these probably are the best um, measurements of behavior change, but yeah, what are, how do you, your, your results were about clicks. So That's right. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. But, right. But That's, that's a great question, and yeah. we had a discussion about it yesterday, uh, about ways in which we can begin to connect these digital metrics to, to real-world impact. And unfortunately, with things like behavior change, mm -hmm. oftentimes those real-world impacts lag by a significant amount of time from the time the campaign runs. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in our work on tobacco prevention and control, which we've yeah. been in for a decade um, now, and even behavior change related to um, public issues of public health. Um, there, are, there is a lag in, in that real world impact, and I think there are some really innovative ideas that I that I heard yesterday that are exciting, um, in which we can measure the the real world, um, the real world impact of taking trash out of our our communities. I, the good news is that marketing is the front runner of that, and so when we see high engagement on digital channels, there is a funnel of of folks who are moving through that that idea toward the the real world action of either picking up litter they see or taking action, um, so it's exciting. That's exciting times. Yeah. Really great graphics, incredible. I'm I'm really excited. My, Thank you. My question is how long you're going to run this? Yeah. That I'll take kind this. of slamming sure. is great. Yeah. yeah. I want to see it, but I want to see it go down and come back. In Absolutely. Eight months. Right. You know, like, yep. Right. right. Pete, yes so so it is coming out of market within the next few weeks yes we um, invested heavily and to your point we uh, wanted to go high impact because we didn't have enough to do a, a, a successful drip campaign and really spread it out we needed it to be high impact with the amount of money that we had but thank you for setting me up on um, my closing. And I know we have one more question and Phoebe came up here, which <laughs> is like the wrap it up. Um, but uh, you know, we are coming out of market from a paid standpoint, which means that we really are going to be relying on all of the partners in this room to continue to tell this story, to push out these um, assets and materials, which are free to use at no cost uh, to all of you. So again, if you go to dced.pa.gov slash litter, um, you will see community resources. You can download the toolkit. We have all of the graphics in different sizes ready to go for social media. We have suggested copy. We have posters. Um, and we are going, and we're translating all of it. Um, but we are going to also continue to build out those assets. We uh, talked with um, our sibling agencies and uh, keep Pennsylvania beautiful about what is next for those uh, toolkits. Are we going to do um, cleanup posters that are fill in the blank that will leave blanks that you could just plug in the date and time so that you could you know put those out, push those out. We're going to continue to do social graphics. Um, we really again encourage you to sign up for that newsletter to stay um, on top of what we are pushing out and the new work that's being done. Uh, but again, it's really um, going to be on many of you to continue to give life to this um, campaign. Also, why we are going to our uh, corporate partners um, and different businesses and organizations around the state to help us uh, carry this water as well. Awesome. Do we have one more question? 
Oh, yes. Oh, nice. And is there any like support for um, that? Like, you know, putting them on uh, financial support for that, putting them on the, the big belly bands. And then um, my other question is, I'd love to get like the litter installation at our transportation center. And I didn't know if there's a chance to possibly oh. have that. Oh, oh. Cool. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm <laughs> And the logo yep. is included in the toolkit. We have the logo in different orientations. We also have a how-to guide, a style guide with the logo, which will give you very clear directions on exactly how to use it. Colors, fonts, yep. That's awesome. I think you have one more question. Yes. First, I just want to commend you for addressing that four inches and less glitter, that 90% of the litter that's out there that's very innovative and bold, and, and hopefully we do see that behavior change and reduction beverage containers and all, all of the litter across the map, but just real curious about, and you kind of led into this, did you give any thought of pros and cons to being able to co-brand uh, this at the community level mm -hmm. uh, yeah. versus yeah. at oh, yeah. the district we did. level? If you go to dced.pa.gov <laughs> um, you'll see uh, in our toolkits, we do have uh, ways um, and, and sample like lockups marketing talk of how to use the PA Fights Dirty logo with a municipality name. It says it is um, presented there with like how to use your municipality. Any business, any organization, uh, it, you know, it doesn't have to just be a municipality. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if the Pocono Mountains Vacation Bureau wanted to throw their name on, and I'm just as an example, I know you guys have a fantastic campaign as well with Pick Up the Poconos, um, but if you wanted to put, uh, you know, attach their name to our logo, we definitely, definitely strongly believe um, in the importance importance of a local community seeing your endorsement as the good housekeeping stamp of approval. So it's not just the state, but it is those um, trusted messengers, those local trusted messengers that the community sees and respects. So please, absolutely, uh, we encourage that. Great resource. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. I am really excited that you all got to speak yeah. to everyone today and everyone got to see this amazing campaign. I really hope that we are all going to adopt it and use it in our communities um, because as Carrie said, the, the local uh, messaging is probably more important than the state messaging. Mm -hmm. So I am gonna <clears throat> dismiss you for uh, a few minutes, but I wanted our board to stand because there's so many of them here today and I'm so excited to see you all. Please just stand very quickly where you are so you can be acknowledged. Look at this. <laughs> this is an amazing board and I'm just really happy to, to be leading it. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, we have 15 minutes or so. To yeah, it's like closer to 10. Yeah, 10, 10.45. Yeah. And then we're going to bring Cecile Carson, who you cannot miss, our national treasurer from a uh, long time from Keep America Beautiful to the stage. So enjoy. <laughs>